32nd Annual Sovereign Pacific Northwest Historics, held every 4th of July weekend at Pacific Raceways. Starting in 2012, Pro 3 has had as many as 43 entries. This year, with the coronavirus, we had 11. Not enough for our own run group, so they stuck us in with the big boys. In a straight line, boy, could they fly. By lap six, I finally caught up with Lance Richard, whose car threw a fan belt, frying his engine. Then it was back to the big boys, Mustangs, Corvettes, and thingamajigs. Young whippersnapper Nick Carbaugh wins with a 137.5. I'm fifth of seven with 141.1, but thanks to Lance and a massive flip by Jim Butterworth, I wasn't DFL. Race two. I think he has an illegal Framistad on his car. <laughs> Did that laugh seem a little forced? I'm behind Beef Widebody Wellington again. This time, no fans in the stands. We lost Lance and Jim, but gained John Hennessy and Manu's car. At least I'm ahead of Eddie Terrace. For one lap. Fighting fierce understeer through 3B, I fall back from the pack. Hey, there's the thingamajig. Guess they put the safety vehicle there so we'd have two things to hit. Might as well hit the smallest thing first. Eddie wins with a 137.3, Nick second, and I'm sixth of six with a 140.5. Yep, DFL. Newcomer John Hennessy not only beats me, he's flirting with my sweetheart Solveig Rockcliffe. With my lightning reflexes, I get the jump on John. But Hennessy pulls away before turn two, as does Wes Hill after fixing a broken rocker arm. Wes's twin, Ken, said it was a five-hour job, four and a half spent whining. Still plowing through 3B, the pack pulls away. Now it's just the ground pounders, a C5 vet, the thingamajig, and a really wild orange vet-like GT car. Through the GoPro microphone, they don't sound like much, but up close, they are truly deafening. Where'd he go? Oh, that's beef sliding around up ahead. Here's my chance. But turn 3B, and he's gone. From a dead stop in the gravel, Eddie Terrace rejoins at the exit of turn 8, but I'm in fourth gear and don't have much giddy up. Fortunately, this time young Eddie decides to play nice. Which is worse, being left in the dust by a fair lane or a thingamajig? They slow beef and I've got a chance. But come up short. Andrew Mitchell wins with a 137.4. Thanks to Eddie's off, I'm sixth of seven with a 140 flat. At least I beat beef back to the paddock. That's what counts, right? Race four. What the? Eddie jumps beef in the paddock. And Beef lets him get away with it? Beef tells me later that they gritted him in the wrong spot. Had me worried. I thought the old military fighter pilot was going soft. Before turn two, Andrew Mitchell gets by. And before the end of lap one, that sweetheart-stealing viper, John Hennessy. Then the big boars, the vet, the thingamajig, and the orange vet-like creature. Here's a swift move. I shift into fifth before turn nine. Then forget I'm already in fifth. Not recommended. Those two actually hurt my ears as they flew by, even through the helmet. And the fair lane destroys my self-esteem. A fair lane. At least this one's a Mustang. I wonder what that thingamajig is. Wes Hill wins with a 137.9. I'm seventh with a 139.9. DFL while just seven tenths off my best. Race five, Andrew Mitchell and John Hennessy go home. Just six of 11 Pro 3 cars left, including rookie Scott Studeris in Mirko Freguia's rental. Scott may be a rookie to Pro 3, but he's no novice. Fortunately, Wes Hill told me to trail break longer in 3B, which helped a lot. Even against this Mustang, I bet he thought it took forever for me to get by. Unlike Mr. NASCAR here, Finally, in race five of six, I drop to third gear for turn eight, which really helps on exit, though it doesn't scare the fairway. Or the Mustang. Or anyone else. Wes wins with a 137.7. I'm fifth of six with a 139.7. Crap, Mirko's hitting on my sweetie too. 
maybe retaliating for beating his renter? Last race of the weekend, I try my distance glasses and can actually see the flag. I'm gridded fifth of six with only renter Scott Studeris behind me. Then even Scott gets by. I give him plenty of room outside. He coming back across, not so much. Still, he is a renter. Through 5B, Scott bobbles and I get by. And he did give a point by. Next lap, I catch the Mustang. But even with trail braking, I can't out-accelerate him. Then I drop it into third and outpower him. Eventually. And following Wes's tip, I pull away through turn eight. But I can't hold off the fairway. Or the other Mustang though I do hang with them in the twisties. But point them straight, and there's no replacement for displacement. Their fastest was 13 seconds a lap faster than ours. Wes wins his third straight race. I'm fifth of six, but even the worst day at the tracks, better than the best day anywhere else. Here's someone giving Wes a run for his money. Young whippersnapper and commercial airlines pilot, Nick Carbaugh. You gotta admit, the kid's got some fast hands, and plenty of attitude. After nearly every race, Wes told Nick to slow down on entry to get to full throttle sooner. But kids will be kids. Watch Nick's rear view mirror. What a move by a crafty veteran. But Nick doesn't give up, nor does he change much. And Wes keeps pulling away at every exit, until the shrewd vet leaves the hard-charging newbie well behind. I'm above all that. I'm packed and ready for the next race, July 17 through 19, here at Pacific Raceways.